So we talk about uh, 45 medieval towns, not uh, uh, only castles. Um, so this is an introduction to the Fortune program, which starts uh, this year. So uh, dealing with towns and fortification in northern France, it's a question about the place of towns within uh, knowledge, uh, which is mainly occupied by castles, in fact. So what are the role of towns in geopolitics? And we have a good example, for example, the place of Les Andelys in Normandy, that you maybe can know. And um, what about the early medieval urbanism during the 11th century? So in France, we have a lot of uh, exhibition in large cities during the 20th century. So we have uh, information in those cities, uh, but we have uh, only one national inventory of um, the 45, uh, 45 town, which is quite ancient now and not complete. Um, hopefully, we have a uh, regional, very good uh, inventory, such as uh, Maski and Amy Fair, uh, but we don't have such things that uh, we can find for Germany, for example. So, what about the architectures of these uh, towns? Um, the purposes of the fortifications? Uh, what are the materials and the influences? Uh, and the link with military innovation? But what we want to insist on is the environment of this uh, fortified town. Uh, of course, uh, a normal way uh, we speak about the role of the topography, but there is more to say about the impact on landscape and geodynamics and the interrelation, in fact, with uh, ecosystemic services. So, uh, actual Eurénoir, is uh, located here, uh, 50 kilometers southwest from Paris. Paris is here. And uh, we have uh, good studies on castles, uh, Nogent le Rotrou and Chateaudun, for example. But in fact, they are castles from towns, uh, but we all only know the castle. And uh, we have a lot of uh, information about the city of Chartres, but only mainly for the Roman period and the cathedral, which is a new school cathedral. We don't know so much things about the medieval town. Um, during the, the Middle Ages, Avenois is uh, a place uh, with many conflicts because it's between the royal kingdom and the county of Blois, for example, which uh, is one of the first uh, stony castles we have built in France is, uh, in this county. And then we have the war between the Plantagenet and the Capetian. So you have the Plantagenet and the Capetian uh, kingdoms. And after that, of course, you have the Hundred Year Wars and the place of Galardon, which is in Orléans, uh, was taken for full time, for example. So today, the actual preservation is quite good sometimes because uh, in this part, there were no wars, no bombing, and there is a very low urbanization. Uh, until today, in fact, I will show you uh, pictures. So, we have, but we have at the end of the 19th century destructions to allow uh, more uh, circulation in the streets. So, doors, medieval doors were destroyed, and only some of them, like in Bonval, were then protected by national heritage. But, in fact, in the old, uh, in this old department, there is a very few monuments that are protected, very few, and they are not in danger because uh, there is maybe a kind of new generation of uh, urbanism right now in the, in the in little center, so a lot of things are going to be destroyed. So we are dealing with a lot of uh, places, and the first overview uh, can count uh, 28 potential 45 uh, little towns. And so for all of them, uh, we have a 19th century plan and maps that we, are, we can work on. And we are going to, we are making uh, an inventory according to the SAU, means Synthèse Archéologique Urbaine. It means that we gather all information we have from uh, written sources, from uh, archaeological excavation and so on. And 
so if we talk a bit about the uh, environment, it's, we have mainly uh, tones by rivers, or plotted in red, and, but some are completely in plain, like here in the booth, where there are no rivers at all. Um, so you can imagine that like, this is a long-term research program that we have started yet uh, now. So to get uh, on the environmental data, we plan to get them from the walls and the ditches, by covering uh, in the ditches, to get charcoals from the walls. Uh, as there is no urbanism, you see, after the, the Second World War, it was like that, and it's almost the same today. So we have a lot of empty plots when we can gather data from the soil and the subsoil. We, are, uh, we plan to make geophys geophysics survey through the ditches and the walls, which are now destroyed. And we started this year an analysis of the hydro system in the part of the department I will show you. We are covering in peats and we, we, we will focus on excavation in, in the town of Galadon. So because it's a very huge area with many, many towns, you know, we decided to focus on Chartres, Galardon and Chateau de Fontimery. Yes, yet. So, um, the town plants, the 19th century town plants, um, we work on it with the archaeogeography method uh, developed by Schulke and Oise. So, you can see star on getting evidence uh, of if maybe sometimes you have very good plan with the preservation of wall and ditches at the end of the 19th century, so it's very easy. But you can have also anormal plot limits sometimes or pattern of organization that you can. Um, study to get uh, morphogenic patterns and information of the traces, the, the traces of ditches, walls, and so on. So sometimes you have a very complex organization, like in Dreux, you have uh, very uh, easy and idealistic, in fact, plans to deal with, and sometimes you don't have any information of those plans. So uh, in Galardon, we are, we are very lucky because we have this plan, uh, which is older. And we have still the fortification that are drawn in the, the ancient moat and the, the very big ditches of the, the, the river. So, this uh, first uh, analyze of the plan allows us to, to discover 11 new uh, towns with fortification. Uh, I draw some, uh, some of them here. And you can see that they are, have almost the same size, except for Chart, which is uh, bishopry. So, it's, uh, it can be understood. And they are a complex morphology, of course, because they are uh, made by uh, centuries of uh, evolution of these uh, walls and beaches and so on. In short, uh, Thomas Le Croer uh, done a, a made a, a study of the municipal account for the end, of the second half of the 14th century, which is very interesting because. It got uh, a lot of information of the way of building the fortification, um, which is quite a long uh, wall, and this is in-house uh, huge campaigns with masonry, uh, but also wood structures with local materials. And uh, what I see here um, is that the channelization of the river is very important because in the in the 14th century, it was, it was already considered a part of the walls. So we can see that the river was completely uh, managed with uh, river doors and so on. So we also started to study in this area uh, the old hydro systems. So I will only focus on the three town of uh, Galardon, Epernon, and Nogent le Roy, which are very close, you can see. And um, in Galardon, this is a plan I just uh, show you. So, um, what is important, uh, I think, is that uh, the very these very big ditches are connecting the plateau with the valley. So, uh, there is a, a strong impact on the sediment transfer between the, the valley into within the plateau uh, from the plateau to into the valley. And of course, we we have a canalization of the rivers to go to the mills. And here we have. A, a little problem because uh, Louis XIV built a very huge canal on all these valleys, so he destroyed, maybe he destroyed the uh, more ancient uh, information you can have. So this is the only actual uh, remains of all the fortification of Galardon, and 
in the 17th century you have uh, all the walls and this, this tower. Epernon uh, is situated on the con connection of three valleys, and so it's an important place uh, because in the beginning of the 13th century, Simon Montfort built walls in it. So, but we don't know if this wall are this one, which can uh, be visible uh, today, uh, which are not everything uh, heritage protected, and or maybe this ones. But they are very big, and maybe they are from prehistoric or Iron Age period. We don't know because we don't have any data. What is very interesting in Epernon also is that we have very few archaeology data from here in a, a huge area, and we have found a village from a village uh, from the fourth to the twelfth century, which disappeared at the time the town was uh, growing. So we have a kind of study of the transfer of the inhabitants in the 12th century uh, from this day. Nojanora is uh, located downstream of this area, so that's quite interesting, because uh, it's, it was the last place you can uh, go with boats from Rouen, for example, when you're going to, to Chartres. So uh, there is an arbor mentioned uh, since the 15th century, and after that, it was impossible to go with boats in the in the in the Upper Valley, and there were proofs of problems and and juridical uh, problems of uh, this kind. And parchments are here to prove that uh, people have to dig, but they don't have the right to dig. So, so uh, the, the navigation was stopped here, and the river was used for meals and uh, certainly for the fortification. We don't have any data yet to prove that. But this is the density of the meals you can have upstream the river, the, the town. So if we consider uh, the old hydro systems, um, huge rescue archaeology allows us to get data from peats and to have uh, a transect in the old valley from 10 kilometers almost, uh, uh, 5 kilometers, sorry, here and here. And so we can see that there is a complex history of the pit formation, of course, but the, the pit stops uh, before the 10th century. So here uh, in the beginning of the 19th, in the middle of the 10th. And there is a high rate of erosion that is um, that has started uh, at the first half of the uh, 14th century. So, to conclude, I would say that this is an area highly urbanized um, and fortified since the 10th and the 11th century. So this is quite interesting for the, the problematics uh, of the, the, the whole problematics of the towns and the relation with castle and geopolitics and so on. But it's also very interesting because we can have first uh, um, idea of what the modification of the sediment flux from the plateau to the valley and of the hydro system this uh, town can have been made. So perspective now are to look at the town without rivers, to know what, the, what is, found, what is uh, going on there, and a more precise analysis of material architecture and so on. So we plan um, uh, of course, to make survey of the urban development because you have uh, always distractions of uh, this area. And in Galardon, in next month, we plan to make a radar uh, geophysical survey in all the area with the moat and the corner of the town fortification. And uh, in the following years, the small excavation located in the ditch here and uh, trench from the ditch to the inner part of the. Of the castle. So, thank you very much for your attention.